In this Douglas College Library tutorial, we're going to look at the elements of a citation and how they change or don't change from one citation style to another. If you aren't sure what a style guide is, here's a simple definition. A style guide is a set of rules that governs the look and layout of your entire paper, from the cover page right through to your bibliography. Style guides specify exactly how to write out your citations, so you'll know what information you need to provide your reader and how to format that information depending on the type of material that you're referencing. Now, no matter what style you use, be aware that you'll be citing twice. First, a brief reference or number in the text of your paper right when you quote or paraphrase your source. This is referred to as an in-text citation, parenthetical, footnote, or endnote. You'll also provide a complete citation at the end of your paper in your bibliography, list of words cited, or reference list. There are a number of popular style guides, and they all show you how to cite a lot of different sources. But for now, let's just look at one style and one source type. For example, MLA style in a print book with a single author. In this case, an MLA in-text citation consists of the author's last name and a page reference. The list of works cited contains more information and is formatted in a very specific way. For example, the title is italicized. And if you need more room, like this example of an ebook from a website, every new line is indented to the right. Let's compare this to another widely used citation style, APA. Starting with the 2020 7th edition, APA's in-text citations look quite similar to MLA's, only the comma is different. However, in the final reference list, APA's punctuation and formatting is different from MLA's. Fortunately, you don't need to memorize any of this. You'll find all the paper formatting information you need in the relevant guide from Douglas College Library when you click the Paper Format Guidelines tab. You won't necessarily be recording the same pieces of information for different types of sources. For example, many styles ask you to cite the name of a publisher for a book, but not if you're citing a journal article or a blog post. You'll find out exactly which pieces of information are required for which type of source by clicking the relevant tabs in the guide you're using. So what's the significance of all this? The important thing to remember is that most style differences come down to differences in punctuation or formatting. So don't stress if you're asked to use a new style. The library has online guides for the most popular styles at Douglas College with lots of examples to help you format and proofread your citations you'll find all the library's online citation guides by clicking this link on our homepage at library.douglascollege.ca. For more help with navigating a style guide, check out our Using Style Guides tutorial in the library's YouTube channel, or contact a librarian by clicking the Ask a Librarian link.